carcinoma of the penis. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you very much for an opportunity to be one of the speakers here devoted to the epidemiology of the squam cell carcinoma. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the topic the topic for my presentation is uh, rather complicated because initially it was planned as a talk with great number of figures and comparisons between countries. I decided to step aside from this paradigm and to go to the conclusions immediately. <clears throat> the conclusions are more or less known and for the squam cell carcinoma we can know a part prognostically and endemic, social and economic fa risk factors of squam cell carcinoma development, which are included into the EAU guidelines and in other literature sources. You can find them, the risk factors of the penile squam cell carcinoma uh, is covered in two of four bullet points where the endemic factors include the North American countries uh, have smaller number of cases when the cumulative uh, share of disease is from 0.4 to 0.6 percent from all the oncological diseases uh, in the countries of um, America and Europe. It's uh, higher. So also Sometimes it is related to the uh, presence or absence of circumcision in men, and uh, about one third of all the squam cell carcinoma, penile carcinomas, according to the optimistic scenario, are associated with HPV infection. So that actually means it's a separate nosology. Further on, I'm going to quote standardized um, data for survival and mortality rates in different countries. You can see that countries of the Mediterranean and countries of the North America. And in those countries we see that standardized uh, figures of the penile cancer is low. Uh, it's estimated for 100,000 uh, people in some Asian countries, in African countries, in Southern American uh, countries, uh, incidence is much higher. Sometimes it's 16 uh, percent higher. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, like in uh, the Southern America and in the so Southern Africa, standardized uh, uh, mortality correlate with incidence, which is quite obvious in the Russian Federation. Uh, uh, it's 0.65 per 100,000. I am talking about the aspects under discussion. So we reflect here uh, what, uh, how does it look uh, in a general uh, structure of oncological diseases. Uh, uh, some deviations in some uh, European countries are obvious. Same about the uh, mortality of uh, the penile cancer in the Russian Federation, like in Europe. Uh, we, uh, it was calculated per 100,000. It's uh, point thirty one for uh, the Russian Federation. We can uh, compare those uh, values, and we could uh, understand that it could be lethal disease in 40 percent of cases. And it's a prognos prognostic uh, value is very high here. There is an attempt to find endemic uh, dependencies, depending on regions, social, economical data uh, regarding uh, 
who is more well, uh, vulnerable, uh, married man or not, or uh, circumcision or not, and that was uh, uh, attempt to find dependency uh, based on the development of countries and a penile cancer is their dependence. Uh, the data here were published by uh, WHO. All countries are uh, split in to groups of high, mid, uh, low potential, uh, potential uh, indices of the development of human potential. Uh, it's medicine, uh, education, uh, quality of life, life standards. China, which is together with India, accounts. Uh, uh, for almost 50 percent of this sample, uh, so China belong from the economical point of view to the mid zone, and then if you do this, uh, the uh, graphs will be comparable. The death of penile cancer is very low, for example, in China. This is for Russia. We can see this dependence of incidence of penile squamous penile cancer and survival of the patients, and we see uh, direct, uh, straightforward dependency. The higher incidence, uh, uh, the higher um, mortalities, uh, uh, some deviations uh, with a high incidence and zero, uh, almost zero lethality. We can see it on the ordinate exit, St. Lucia and Luxembourg. It's, uh, it's interesting, but it's per uh, 100,000 was calculated, uh, but in absolute figures, so 2.6 patients. In general picture, European countries have some deviations, uh, and African countries, uh, they are in one group, and uh, African countries I belong to another group. Uh, it's dependency obvious of the lethality from incidents. So their lethality could be higher. Actually, to confirm that our data comparable with the uh, European studies um, year by year, comparison is possible 1994 to 1997 for Russia. Uh, the, uh, Lethality is comparable during those periods, and it correlated only with the stages. Uh, to which extent it was possible to judge about it with such uh, some with the samples that were available there. The numbers of patients. It's quite a rare disease. Uh, less than two percent in the structure of. <coughs> Oncological diseases in uh, population of only about men, it's uh, uh, much lower than 1%. Uh, even in one country, the risk is uh, 16 times higher, it's still less than 1% of risk. And uh, can we speak about uh, pro uh, prognostical value uh, with such a uh, prevalence, whether it's valuable, I do not know. We should know about it, but um, understand it, but uh,